your screen. Yeah, we're seeing, we're seeing yours. We're seeing it. We're seeing it, Paddy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I've been looking at otters in Cork City since about the turn of the century. And although you can't see the otter in the picture and the magazine, it has a white moustache in its upper jaw. That's quite a, something that I'll come back to. This is an article about wild cork that I published in the Village magazine. At the time, it was the organ of uh, Vincent Brown. Um, and there's one uh, quote that's picked out on the slide, which is, in spite of a lack of local sensitivity, it's now taught that Ireland is a genetic biodiversity hotspot. Okay, so we have a lot of unique biodiversity and probably the biggest and most charismatic representative of this biodiversity is the Irish otter, which is not found anywhere else in the world and is very different from otters found elsewhere. But there are a lot of other animals and plants that represent Ireland's biodiversity. And we were specifically interested in otters in the city because up until that time, they'd just been studied in the countryside. Otters, otter populations, because they're top predators, have collapsed worldwide, particularly in Western Europe. And Ireland is one of the, 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 um, the strongholds for the species. So the first survey we did between- Sorry, Paddy, there's a message there. Can you do full screen, please? Sure, I can. Just, uh, yeah, that would probably... be better. That's better. Thanks, Paddy. If you, if you could push you guys up, you, they could see the, they could see the whole thing. The, the first survey was between um, 2000 and 2003. Here you see uh, somebody being trained for that first survey by a guy called Andrew Harrington. The guy being sir, uh, trained is uh, Lorcan O'Toole, who's the guy who reintroduced Golden Eagles to Donegal. And he's looking a bit apprehensive, so he's just been told that you have to pick up the otter shit and look at it and store it away, as Chris has illustrated it in, in the previous um, pictures. And you can see a bit of otter shit on the right hand side there in front of a holt. A holt is a burrow that, that uh, otters live in. And if you can get enough fresh enough otter droppings, you can get DNA from them. And from that DNA, where we can work out the individual identity and the sex of the otter, and then we can build up a picture of the entire population. So this is the first group that used DNA to look at otters in the city. This is us meeting at Blackpool, and that's that same otter in the background with the moustache underneath its, its mouth. And the, the two uh, DNA specialists are in the center of the group, Denise O'Mara and Andrew Harrington, and they're DNA specialists at WIT, Waterford Institute of Technology, now the Technological University. And here you see Shane White, who's another mem member of the group. And this group went out and found these things here. That's a pic close-up picture of an otter sprint. And you can regard it as a, as a dropping, but it's much more than a dropping. It's a chemical communication between otters. And as such, it's covered in a mucilage. And from that mucilage, in 10% of the circumstances, we can extract DNA. And therefore, we can tell individual otters apart. And that's an extremely important thing. It's kind of like CSI Miami applied to wildlife biology. And an important part of wildlife biology these days. But remember that we can only recover uh, DNA from about 10% of the droppings. So these people collected otter droppings from all over the city, from uh, seven different areas spread across the city, Blackpool, Bishopstown, the city centre, Toher, Rochestown, and Dunkettle, and another one in here, the, the harbour mouth. And those red dots represent sprint that we recovered, that we recovered DNA from. And we got a general picture of what you'd expect from otters, which is most of the male otters occurred in the main river in the city centre, and then females tended to occur up the tributaries. This is because females and their cubs are frightened of the, the male otters. They tend to hide out in, in the upper tributaries and the males, two males patrol the city center. There was a female who had uh, something wrong with her sex chromosome. She had a mutation on her second sex chromosome. And one of the wits in the outfit uh, uh, cracked a joke at the time, which is that she might be very good at the Olympics. Anyway, pressing on. So. Um, when the results of this 2011-2012 survey came in, we could figure out how many otters there were in the city. Now, remembering that we only sampled 10 otters, 
Uh, of these 10 otters, two occurred, two, two males, as I said, occurred in the city centre. We had one male, uh, one otter female occurring out of Corraheen. In total, of all of them that we found between 2011 and 2012, there were 11 otters, six males and five females, okay? And of these, eight occurred in the Blackpool area, four males and four females. And two of those females were, were siblings, we think. It's, it's pretty clear. So the River Bride is used by eight of the 11 otters in Cork City. Now, if you remember back to Chris's slide, this is exactly the area that they're going to convert. So they're going to kill the habitat that these otters live in, which, which is a terrible tragedy given that urban otters are unusual internationally. And we have this fantastic representative of this uh, native biodiversity within the city. So these are the volunteers being shown the underpass underneath the bride in Blackpool that Chris was talking about. That's me down there getting to this otter underpass. And you see the underpass on the right hand side of the picture there, and you see some otter sprain at the end of the underpass. This underpass is very important because it allows otters to, to go underneath the road during times of flooding. Now you might think that otters shouldn't be frightened of, of being drowned, but in fact, cubs are very easily drowned. And these otter passes seem to be one of the reasons that otters are so common in Blackpool. The other reason being that there's a lot of biodiversity there, particularly biodiversity of prey, particularly salmonids, as, as Chris was saying, and other fish species. And these are some of the otters, uh, so, some of the volunteers in the river out collecting uh, springs. And this is the, the underpasses that the otters use uh, when there are floods. And that gives you an idea of the construction underneath Blackpool Shopping Centre. So if you take this on a seasonal basis, this is the latest survey we did. This otter with a tail here is, is a representative of an otter seat, an otter area that they go to the toilet in, if you like, an area of otter dropping. Then there are slides, there are holes, there are tracks, mink tracks, jelly, and where we put cameras. And you can see this is the whole, the bride area that Chris showed in his map. If we kill that bridge down to Ladies Well Brewery, there's a lot of otter activity. This is the total activity that we recorded in the year that we, we did the special uh, survey. And here you see the uh, uh, river in the spring of that year. And what's interesting about this is that we were getting otter seats right away along the river. But when we did a three day survey, we picked up two new sprains, the new sprains being represented in green uh, at two sites in the river. So when people went to check the otter sprains over a three day period, they took a photograph, they uploaded this to the Cork Nature Network website, and then they could tell if another, another otter sprain had arrived overnight, i.e. had a new and an otter arrived and used the sprain site over those three days. And we found in every season there was new otter sprain. This represents spring. And I'll just show you one more. This represents summer, the height of otter activity. And you can see there were lots and lots of new sprain over the three day period. So this shows conclusively, A, that there, a lot of the uh, urban otters in Cork use Blackpool, but B, they use it in every season. This is not just an ephemeral use. This is permanent, regular use of this habitat, probably because A, they don't get killed in the roads because of the underpass, and B, because there's lots of prey. Otters will do anything to get at prey. And there's a brain, I have an article on RTE Brainstorm, that's the link there at the bottom of the page. And it's also rep, uh, uh, on Chris's Twitter feed if you want to get at it. So I just, uh, we've used DNA and we're very content and happy with our colleagues in WIT for providing the DNA, but perhaps there is another way of uh, dif differentiating individual others using this white mustache. You, you see this picture that was in the, the uh, Village magazine. If you look at the, uh, upper part or the lower part of the uh, jaw there, you can see there's a white kind of moustache. This moustache seems to be idiosyncratic and it's only found on Ireland's otters. This is a photograph taken by Shane White, who was the guy who published that first uh, article on DNA. And you can see how good the photograph is because you can see the otter's whiskers. And this is uh, another photograph. Unfortunately, you can't see it because Dominic and Chris are on the way, but you can see this, the moustache there 
and you could tell that one moustache from the other. So we have the potential, if we use camera traps within the city, to identify individual otters. And because they're so different in size, males and females, we could probably tell them apart using that. In addition to DNA, we could therefore find out a very accurate uh, uh, estimate of the number of otters used in Cork City, given that we originally thought there were six. Now we know there are 11 or 12. There could well be 24. This represents, given it's a top predator, a very significant part of uh, the city's biodiversity. And because they're top predators, represents a huge prey base within the city. And there are the two links. One is to the RT brainstorm on, on the, the otter, RT have implied that the otters have come into the cities. In fact, we now know right well that they've been here for a long time. And another is a lecture I gave at a, uh, a flood event held by um, CNN. It's called How Safe for Irish Otters, and there's a link there. And as I say, these links are also can be found on Chris Moody's um, uh, uh, his Twitter account. So just to summarize, otters are common in Cork City. They're a unique bit of our biodiversity. Of all the city's habitat, the city that is most used is in Blackpool. Therefore, the area should not, under any circumstances, be turned into a, a covered drain. It should be kept as an as a, as a active ecosystem. Thank you for listening to me. Thanks very much for that, Paddy. Uh